We can't ask these politicians nothing. Those people are awful people, Democrats and Republicans. They're all crooks. What recently has come up is uh, Charlie Baker, my former governor, my former governor in Massachusetts, is the new president of the NCAA college athletics, obviously. And he recently said that he wants consumer protections around name, image and likeness, which is a big debate within college sports about how much rights should an athlete have to their own image and likeness and the monetization of it. And uh, so Charlie Baker says he wants federal legislation uh, regulating this. And um, Charles Barkley had a, a pretty based response, Hannah. Take a listen to this. Chuck, you're shaking your head. <laughs> Did he say we're going to ask the politicians to help us? See, that, that pisses me off already. Our politicians are awful people. As I talked to Clark earlier, because I asked him about y'all conversation, I would actually go to people who actually care about basketball, not looking at it just themselves. I would put a committee together. I would love for Clark to be on the committee, get some coaches, get some players, and let's try to work this thing out. We can't ask these politicians nothing. Those people are awful people, Democrats and Republicans. They're all crooks. So I will admit, I cracked up a little when he just said, they're awful people. <laughs> They're all crooks. Charles Barkley, the libertarian. I knew I liked him as a kid. I always thought he was the cutest in Space Jam, so I had a little crush on him as a child. But now it's backed up even further. This was hella based. I thought he came out swinging. I love that he was like, all of them, Democrats and Republicans, why would you let these people regulate it? They're not for you. They don't work for you. They don't have your interests at heart. Like, he came out hard. And I think there's just something so pleasant about watching like non-political people just come in and knock it out of the park like this because they get it right instinctively i think people who are actually awake and paying attention recognize that there is one party and they don't work for you and that you don't want these people governing your basic decisions or your finances and you don't have to be like super politically astute to have common sense and recognize that no i agree with you and i also think there's a broader philosophical point here that he kind of stumbles on which is what Hayek called the knowledge problem, right? Federal regulators huddled in an office in Washington, D.C. simply don't have the diverse knowledge of things across the country that they're trying to regulate. So, for example, something like college sports, name, image, and likeness, these people don't know anything about. Members of Congress don't know any, or maybe a few of them are super sports fans and do, but like the actual college association officials and student and the student athletes and the organizations that represent them, they know about this, right? And they should be, if you don't regulate it and you leave it up to them to sort out among themselves, the people closest to the situation will be the ones writing the rules. That's going to be much more functional than if people who aren't familiar with the situation from far away, who are responsible for hundreds of different subjects are trying to write rules for something that they are particularly familiar with and don't understand. A great example of this is tech regulation. Congress is full of people who literally don't understand how Wi-Fi works, which <laughs> is what we saw at the TikTok hearing last week. Uh, a representative did not understand why TikTok would need to connect to his house's Wi-Fi network. And yet these people are going to write comprehensive sweeping regulations on data privacy in the tech sector. Tell me how that's going to work out. Like this is the, the, the theory behind decentralization that Hayek explained is that the people closest to a situation are the most familiar with it and should be the ones who govern themselves. Uh, and, and so in most cases, so for something like college sports to need to be regulated in Washington, D.C. like this doesn't make much sense and is probably going to lead to a dysfunctional result for the exact reasons that Charlie, Charles Barkley just explained. I also think there's something so patronizing about what your former governor said at the top, which is that we need to have these regulations and these standard things for people to follow when they're making these deals because these poor, stupid kids can't determine. No, that's wrong. I mean, I really think that's something that is just really backwards at how we look at things. People are often their own best advocates. And just because somebody is better at being an advocate for themselves than others doesn't mean you need to regulate it. Because what you do is you sort of, you know, bring the bottom down. If I'm a really good negotiator and I'm a college athlete, I should be able to make my own deals and figure out what's best for me and even hire assistance if that's what I want to do to determine the legality of some of those things. But I think you could have sort of a standard contract that you gave these athletes from the association to say, here's the best practices or here's an educational workshop so that you don't get 
taken advantage of, but to say that they want to come in and regulate what kind of deals these people can sign. I mean, as a whole, it just seems to be that it's always where things tend to go. They just made it legal for them to li- license their own likenesses very recently. That was a very corrupt thing they banned forever. And now they're trying to find ways to come in and take back control of that. And I just think if I were a college athlete, I would be very annoyed at that. 